What is up guys, Thaddeus here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Thaddeus. I teach dropshipping, uh, Instagram content creation, a bunch of stuff. But in this video, I wanna actually talk about today uh, the difference between, I'm gonna just say branding versus dropshipping. And what I mean by branding is, yes, I know it's not the technical term for it, okay, I get it. Um, we're talking about white label and private label, okay? And the actual difference between that, that e-commerce business model and the dropshipping business model, okay? Now, the first thing you have to do is understand that all these different e-commerce models, whether they're doing you know, print on demand, dropshipping, white label, private label, in this case, branding, um, it's all, it, it's, 90% of it is the difference relies on the back end, okay? So most of this stuff is not client side, or sorry, uh, the client side, that's like software term. Um, public facing, okay? Most of this stuff that happens is behind the scenes where people don't usually see anything. Cause like, again, if, you know, when I teach dropshipping, I'm telling people like, if, if someone can tell you're dropshipping, then you're not dropshipping right. And, and like, what I actually mean by that is like, if someone can go to your website and understand that, you know, you're actually, not who's facetiming me <laughs> you're actually drop shipping then you're not actually drop shipping properly and what i mean that is like because the way you should be angling your brand or at least the perception you should be giving off when you are drop shipping is that you are a legit brand and that's why i titled this video branding versus drop shipping is so that you can kind of understand that you know branding um in terms of the back end of things is more do you hear that do you hear that that's a facetime someone's face i don't pick up random numbers uh, oh yeah okay so nope Nope, don't have it yet. So basically, guys, what I'm trying to say is, you know, with branding and with drop shipping, right? A lot of this, even even print on demand, like any of these e-commerce business models, okay, where you have your own website and you're doing something on like the back end side of things, all that stuff is on the back end, right? The customers, all right, the the potential clients, the traffic, none of that stuff, they, they don't really see any of that, okay? Because again, you should be branding, you should be doing your own content. This is why a lot of people don't get sales in drop shipping, is because it should be, you know public side like customer facing it should look all the same but when you're drop shipping right people who drop ship terribly when they use supplier photos use all this kind of crap right and someone visits their website and they're like oh this guy's drop shipping like i'm not gonna buy from or it just gives off a really bad vibe and that's why a lot of people don't get money with drop shipping um like don't don't see sales or results is because they're not branding right they're not doing it how an actual brand would do it public facing okay does that kind of make sense now we actually talk about the actual difference between drop shipping and you know white label, white label. again 90 percent of this stuff is all in the back end okay so what does that actually mean well one you have your own products okay this doesn't mean this doesn't necessarily mean that you yourself have to have a bunch of boxes in your you know storage closet full of inventory that you ship out and go to you know drive to USPS every single day to ship out okay that's what I was doing when I first started you don't need to do that okay that's not the actual difference now the main difference is that you have inventory of bulk or like you, you literally have large amount of inventory whereas drop shipping you don't okay private label white label so basically with private label it means you're taking a product that already exists slapping your name on it um, and then selling it with white label and actual like branding and stuff like that you're actually creating a product that's unique to itself something that you know the market hasn't actually seen yet um, this could be, you know, variations, designs, whatever, um, the actual use case of a product, like that's kind of where white label would be and private label is more taking something that, that already exists that doesn't have a logo on it and putting your logo on it, okay? Which is what I did with my bracelets, if you haven't seen uh, one of my other videos where I talk about private labeling. But again, the main difference is where it is an inventory, okay? Where most of it, guys, is you just have a bunch of inventory that you have to basically order up front, order in bulk, and then ship out. Now, where, where like, how do you handle shipping, right? Because a lot of that, I get a lot of questions about that, um, is just like, how do I ship? about my orders like do I have to order everything to my house all this kind of stuff now no you don't have to do that at all guys this is why drop shipping is really only just an entry into an industry into this e-commerce industry not like the end result that you want to be at. okay this is why again I tell people if you're trying to get into e-commerce get into drop shipping first figure everything out and and move over to white label okay or branding okay in this case right what I'm trying to get at is that Turn off this fucking fan. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is that, again, a white label brand or, you know, a custom product, a custom, you know, company, whatever you're trying to do, if you start something yourself where you're not dropshipping, guys, it can very, very similarly emulate dropshipping in the fact that you don't have to manage the orders yourselves, you can do all that. The, the only main issue, guys, is like you're taking on a little bit more risk in the beginning because it takes a little bit more inventory, it takes a little bit more product to get started because that's what it is you're doing, like, depending on the product, depending on your industry. For example, right? Uh, 
a long, long time ago, I tried to do a white label business with solar phone cases, okay? That would charge your phone using light, okay? To charge your phone, or it was charging the case, and the case would charge your phone, right? For that, the actual manufacturer, they wanted $10,000 for molds, okay? Molds for the actual, like, to actually make the mold for for your phone, right? On top of that, then we had to order inventory, all that kind of stuff, which is like, that, 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 that completely eliminated me from the business. I couldn't afford that, okay? I couldn't afford just to spend $10,000 on molds, and then probably, another $8,000 minimum on inventory, right? Assuming that the molds and the products and the testing, all that stuff, like, didn't actually have anything else, like any other costs associated with it, okay? Which is why that usually takes a lot more money. But again, that's just the industry I was in. Was like, it, it was a technical product, okay? It was a charging case. There's a lot more that has to go into that, right? For example, I don't know if you guys know this, but in a charging phone case, the actual plug-in that goes into your iPhone, for instance, if you actually want it to be legit, then you have to actually get that sourced or get it approved by Apple and they take a $15 fee on every single product sale, okay? That's something that we had to research, that I had to research when trying to do solar or solar phone charging cases, okay, that was way back. But then again, if you're trying to do, you know, white label bracelets, then it's just a matter of finding manufacturers, telling them the material you want. Um, you can literally issue out sketches. You don't need to use a CAD design, which is a type of software, guys, um, for like 3D modeling and stuff. You don't have to do any of that, but it's really, really simple because it's, it's not a complex product, okay? It's easy easily customizable and it's easy something you can brand yourself and then ordering a bunch of bracelets and cheap is not that expensive and then packaging one is not that expensive which brings me on to my next point like another difference right is is the actual packaging itself packaging and inserts right now, a lot of people don't understand they they think that the same supplier that is going to create your custom products is also going to give you custom boxes and packaging which is not usually the case okay let me just put this an example right if I were to make a custom bracelet like this okay and I said okay I you know I had all the specs out I had all the designs like okay I want you know uh, black lava beads with my logo on one of the beads and have that one be a metal bead okay they're like okay got it done and then I order you know a thousand of them and assuming that there may be you know two bucks a pop it actually be a lot less they're literally be like 45 cents okay then I buy a thousand of those they're gonna come in like little white little clear packets because that's more efficient for our supplier okay they're not gonna give you a branded box with your logo and name and all that kind of stuff on it and especially not custom inserts where you can actually increase your like your brand's potential and outreach by having those inserts in there they don't they don't give you that now what you have to do again there's more pieces on the back end of a branding or white label business than there is on a dropshipping business. So you're gonna have to reach out to an actual supplier that makes custom boxes, like cardboard boxes, custom packaging. It's all very easy to find on Alibaba, which is probably the go-to if you're just getting into white labeling, okay? But you're gonna go do that, okay? You're gonna find a supplier that actually does the custom boxes, the custom packaging, okay? Then that's where you work with them and actually work out designs and stuff that you want. And then most of the time you have to find another supplier, okay? So this is our third supplier now, right? We have the product, the actual packaging for our product, and then inserts, right? which is super easy. Now, you can go to like US-based stuff, but it's just more expensive, and especially if it's an insert, it's just paper, so it's a lot cheaper to just get that from China, but you could order like, literally like 5,000 custom paper inserts, which is just like a little paper insert that says, you know, your name, it's nicely designed, your logo, you know, a little model, whatever you're about, telling you, like telling the customer, right, when they open up the box, right, whatever it is, they see the insert, and it's like, oh, hey, take a picture, tag us on Instagram, blah, 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 whatever it is, like, that. that's what a custom insert is, right? It's something that, it just allows you to have an extra voice, an extra say to the customer once they receive your product, okay? Because the experience, like in an actual brand, guys, when you're branding, when you're white labeling, private labeling, like the actual experience of a customer receiving your product and like the unbox, like that's why you see so many unboxing videos, guys, like unboxing a Louis Vuitton thing, un unboxing, you know, new Nike Skechers, whatever. The experience that someone gets from opening your, your brand's product, okay, is a huge factor that goes into white labeling, private labeling, and like this whole branding side of, side of things versus where dropshipping where you know it's just the supplier sending stuff over to your product if, assuming you're doing that from AliExpress or something and not working out um, a deal with with an actual supplier okay guys so like that that's also a main difference okay so kind of just a recap because I know I've been kind of like jumping around a little bit um, just because I want to make sure you guys get all this information right main difference right you have a lot of inventory okay you have to order inventory in bulk Okay, now you don't have to do this before, like, you, you can get samples, guys, from the suppliers, which are one-offs, they're a little bit more expensive, but you can get samples first, verify it's the product you want, it's exactly to spec, and then order in bulk, okay? But, again, you have to order in bulk all the time, basically. You are shipping things out yourself. Now, this is where I need to explain as well. There's there's these centers, guys, called, like, pick-and-pack centers, okay? Or you, you can look for fulfillment warehouses, that's also a term that they're called, but basically, it's literally like an Amazon Prime where you can ship your products to the warehouse, and they'll handle 
handle everything for you. They'll handle, you know, when you get an order, okay, they'll get a notification for, again, this is where you connect it in the back end of Shopify, which they have all this stuff conveniently laid out for you, okay, but they'll get an order, the warehouse gets a notification, they, their employees will go find it in their warehouse, put it in a box, ship it out for you, da da da, done, okay? Now again, if you have multiple suppliers, right, where it's like, oh, custom boxes, custom inserts, product, all that stuff is going to the warehouse, then there's also some additional fees usually because they have to assemble everything for you, all right, because you're again, you're not doing it yourself. Now this is where like depending on your budget, right, if you only have money to order products and do a little bit of marketing, it's probably not cost efficient to have all your products go to a warehouse. Hey baby, how you doing? It's probably not cost efficient to have all your products go to a warehouse when you're first starting off because again, they charge per cubic meter, okay, they charge per assembly, they charge per order, per shipping, oh, oh ooh. guys, that's Sebastian Gorgigugu. That's That should be your new nickname. Keep that in your video. Sebastian Gugu. Now, again, guys, going back to where, where what I was talking about is fulfillment centers often have a few more fees. Now, again, it's not super expensive, okay? Like, like all those things I just talked about, like the per order, the per, you know, um, grabbing it from the warehouse and assembling everything and putting it into a box and shipping it out. Like, those are just like, oh, 35 cents a transaction, 35 cents an order, stuff like that. But it can stack up, guys. Um, and that's just what I'm saying. Like, it, it might be more cost efficient for you to have this stuff in your in your room back there um, where you you know you go and make daily trips to USPS or do whatever um, just to like again just to save more money until you're ready to go but that's not something I would always advise like if you're gonna go white label or go private label then I suggest doing it like the right way the entire way um, if you can't afford to do that then again that's where you start with drop shipping okay guys so that, that's just a few like key points and differences that I kind of wanted just to like bring your guys like bring attention um, to you guys and understand you guys like can do that and it's not like entirely like complex it's just a little bit more pricier um, there's a lot more that goes into the back end side of things now now we like we haven't even touched on the public facing side which is just like content branding marketing um, a lot of the things that you do with drop shipping for instance a lot of drop shippers they don't use professional emails like that's ridiculous um, you should always be using that now for branding that's like a must you can't use your personal email or some random gmail email okay like there's those small things that go into the public side of things guys but the real key big take points take away points are kind of the ones that we discussed in this video um but that <laughs> That, that's basically what it is guys the main differences between you know quote unquote branding which I understand I use this term in the video just because most people don't understand uh, what white label or private label is or the difference between that which is why I use that word but that's the difference between those uh, types of e-commerce business models and dropshipping guys so I hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like make sure to leave a comment I respond to everybody's comments um, let me know if I should make more you know private label videos because that's what like that's really what I'm doing a lot now these days um, which I love doing so I'm doing that I'm also doing you know documentaries in Bali which I'm super excited about so either way guys leave a comment let me know what you think and don't forget to subscribe make sure to check the description for anything and everything that is important and I will see you guys in the next video take care and peace you